Brother Raymond, would you offer? Lord, we thank you for this another day of life that you granted us. Thank you, Lord, for this Lord's day. You made a way in order to come out to your house here today. Help us to worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. We're excited to hear this life. We're thankful, Lord, that you're alive and well, and you always will be. You're sitting on the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. You're always there, Lord, to pick us up. We're thankful that spirit lives in our heart, and as we pray for all that don't know you today in that free part of sin and will they perish. And the Spirit draw them, Lord, and may them repent and accept them before it's too late. We thank you for the joys of our salvation in our homes and our families. Countless blessings, Lord, that you bestow upon us. We know, Lord, we're unworthy of any of those things that give the salvation. So thank you today, Lord. Pray for the service. Pray that you take over with your Spirit, Lord, and conduct yes. us. Everything that's said and done, preaching and singing, being every part of it, Lord, we might go away today and say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, we pray for those prayer requests that have already been turned in. There's so many, Lord, that's afflicted in their bodies today. Uh, we're thankful that you're all seeing, you're all knowing, you know where they are, what they have need of. Pray, Lord, you reach down and touch them with your healing spirit and might be raised up. Pray for those that's out of the way today. Remember those that are free, give them great comfort. Pray for this country today. We pray for our leaders. Lord, they might have a heart for you. We invite you in this service. We pray and ask these things and give thanks in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princesses, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and as such it had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of king's meat and of wine, which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he, he gave unto Daniel the name Belshazzar, and to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, uh, Meshach, and to Ezra of Abednego. But Daniel, now I want you to know what verse 8 says. I like this, it says, but Daniel. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. We look at some of the rest of that there in a bit. We see the background in this story, it was a takeover. You know the devil wants to take over? Yeah. He wants to press you. He wants to put pressure on you into changing and into conforming. You say, Brother Brad, when? It's already taking place. You know, this week when a nation is passes a bill uh, to abort a full-term baby, there's something wrong. Right. At the same time, they will allow, the same people will allow a, a premeditated murderer. <coughs> they will say, oh no, we don't want to kill him. Hmm. But we're okay to kill a baby. Yeah. We're in a mess, huh? Amen. Amen. We find here, this, uh, I, I never years I preach this, and I, I, I believe we live in a time of Babylon. We got a Babylon takeover that's taking place. And you know the word Babylon means confusion. We're living in a time of confusion. I mean, our poor kids, they grow up in a world that is confusing. They hear one thing here, one thing there, one thing over here. Mama says one thing, Grandpa says another, Daddy says something else, the preacher says something else. The fact that it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what anybody says, it matters what God says. Amen. Amen. The devil wants to confuse the whole world and right. he's doing a good job of it. Now, by the way, you know why this takeover took place? It's because God allowed it. That's right. God gave Nebuchadnezzar, he is the wicked king, to bring judgment on the people of God. So you know what that tells me? Nebuchadnezzar really wasn't in control. It still was God. Right. And when we look at our world today, and we feel like we're being pressed among measure, it just seems like it's so much, we're getting pushed here, pushed there. I'm going to tell you, you know who's still in control? I still have a God that knows what's going on yes, and amen. is in charge. Amen. Thank you. It didn't surprise him. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, talks about the thief. It says, Jesus said, I'm the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. The devil wants to steal. He wants to take. Right. Say, what's he want? You know what I mean? The first thing he wanted here, he wants the worship that is deserving of our God, our Creator. Satan wants it. Right. He wants that worship. Notice there in 
in verse 2, said they brought the vessels of the treasures of the house. They took them out of the, the temple. You know those vessels were used. They were sanctified. They were set aside for one purpose. To give our God glory. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know what Nebuchadnezzar did? He stole them. Mm. And he brought them to the, the, his gods. And put them in here. That wasn't God's intent. Uh, his desire is that those vessels were used for him. You know the devil wants your worship? You say, well, he won't get mine. Oh, he's got it a few times. Mm. Yep. That's right. Yep. You know what? Those that are out there sitting in their house right now in their jammies, okay? Come on. You know what? They, you know what they've just done? They took what God is deserving of Amen. and on. gave it to the devil. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, say, I don't worship the devil. If you're not worshiping God, you worship the devil. That's right. He, he's got a good heyday, and he's happy about that. Now, we can get on them that are in the jammies, praise God, but you know what? If you're here this morning, the Bible said you must worship him in spirit yeah. and in truth. Sometimes you're here and you just aren't in the right spirit. I'm just going to tell you that. And just, I wish sometimes we're more flesh than spirit. Yeah. The devil likes that. Well, I, they came to church. I'm not too happy about that. You know what? I sure won't want their mind on God. I don't want them to give God any praise. I want them to think about the neighbor. I want them to think about a, an argument. I want them to think about the food. I want them to think about anything else. But giving God the glory. He's a thief. He wants our worship. And I tell you what, my God deserves so much more. Amen. Not only does he want our worship, he wants worshipers. Yeah. We find as we read this here, they said, now go get some children. Verse 3 and 4. You know what kind of children he told them to get? He didn't just say go get anybody. Go get them in the jammies over there. No, he didn't say that. He said get those. He says, he said there, he said that of the house of Israel. You know who Israel was? That was God's chosen people. Yeah. That's who I want. I want to get them. I'm not concerned about the Philistines. I'm not concerned about the Hittites. I'm not concerned about those uh, otherites, those Canaanites. I'm concerned about the devil. He said, I want those Hebrews. I want those children of God. You know, this morning, you know who he wants? He wants you. He said, I want those that are the king's seed. Amen. Princesses. He said, children who has no blemish. That's who he wants. He wants those worshipers. As I thought about, about that. You know, a, a child when they're young, I'm going to tell you what, they're pure. Now, they're the laundry. Don't get me wrong. They learn pretty quick. But you know, they, they're not accountable yet. And a child, a little child, when it dies, it goes to heaven. Yep. I believe that, amen. amen. Those aborted babies, by the way, they went to heaven. Amen. Yeah. There was a real lie. The devil wants them. He wants to put some pressure on those children. And I'm going to tell you what, it starts right away. I tell you right away. Kids are smart. I don't know kids today are smarter than when I was a kid. Maybe when you were a kid, you weren't that smart. But my, my grandchildren, it's amazing how smart they are. My 14-month-old, my his favorite thing is my phone now. And he knows what buttons to push. And I take that away from him, and he goes, ah! <laughs> but they know all kinds of things. And the devil wants to press them into knowing something other than our God. You're doing a good job of it, by the way. But you know what he also wants? 
You know who else is pure, who's without blemish? The born again child of God. Yeah. Now, he can't get me, but he sure can take and make a blemish in my life. Mm. I'm going to tell you what, I'm glad to tell you I'm not perfect. I'm not sinless, but I've been forgiven. Amen. Thank you. The blood of Jesus Christ cleansed me of my sins. Amen. Amen. And that made me a precious, precious, uh, uh, perfect, without blemish in God's eyes. The devil hates it. And he's going to try, he's tried to put the pressure on you to do something about that. That's what he wants. He, doesn't, well, he wants God's worship and he wants God's worshipers. We, uh, we find here he, he also wants to change us. Hmm. Now, uh, it's amazing when we look at this text here, what he said he wanted to change him. He said he wants them to have some new learning. He wanted to change their ways. He got Daniel. We find the, the four boys are there. And we find there's many boys here. There's many young, young men. And they're trying to change them. They're trying to put pressure on them to conform them into their image, the Chaldeans. And he wanted to change their ways. And if you, if you study about the Babylonians and you study about the Chaldeans, it's kind of amazing. A lot of knowledge came from them. Very smart. They, had, they invented metal of forming, copper, glass work. They invented many things. They gave us the, the 60 minutes that we have on our clock today and the 60 seconds in a minute. It all started from the Babylonians. They studied the stars. You want to know where uh, astrology, their origins came from? You go back to Babylon. Very smart, very uh, scientific, much knowledge, much math was involved. If you want to study, I looked this up, horoscopes, you know where they came from? Babylon. I read my horoscope yesterday. No, I, okay, I just did it for fun. Okay, just I just want to read it for my message. I don't do that every day, by the way. There ain't nothing in it, by the way. Right. I was reading here an article a while back where the millennials, a younger generation, is turning from religion, turning to astrology. Now, by the way, the reason they're turning to astrology because all they had was religion. Religion is nothing. The devil likes you to have religion. You need to have Jesus. Amen. If you got Jesus, I tell you what, you don't need your horoscope. That's right. I'll tell you. Now, this is for if you're in, in my realm, July 23rd to August 22nd, I'm a Leo. Do not, it said, here's, here's, here's what the horoscope told me. Do not do anything rash now. Wait a day or so and think on it. <laughs> Well, I think I've had that advice my whole life. Oh. And then it said, spend time alone and give your partner some space. I did last night. Notice they're even politically correct. They said partner. Did you notice that? So I thought I'd read my wife's. <laughs> so I read my wife's horoscope. You've had stress due to overwork. Might be causing your energy to flag some, somewhat today. I think that's every day with her. But here, I like this. I didn't read this to her. It says in the evening, order a pizza. <laughs> and watch TV. Don't make more work for your your you buy cooking. That's a horoscope. Can you believe that? It must be Pizza Hut must be in the center of that. They want everybody. That's you know, by the way, that's one twelfth of the population uh, that I read 
that said you need to go get a pizza. Watch TV. You know what I also found? If I go to another site, there's a different horoscope. I was trying to find who and who's the dirty, rotten rascal that's making these horoscopes that's in the paper. I still couldn't figure it out. They're getting it somewhere. They're getting some source. Somebody writes down, and I was reading some, yeah, they, they don't even believe in it, but they make up these Chinese chip things here, these uh, fortune cookie deals. <laughs> you know what? The devil wants you to listen to that and say, yes! I don't need God, I got horoscope. What an awful, what an awful thing. He wants to change him. And he, wanted, he wanted to change these, these young men. He wanted to change their, their ways. He wanted them to, uh, uh, to look into medicine instead of the maker. I'm glad for medicine, but I'm going to tell you what, the maker you better go to. Amen. Looking into your philosophy they wanted to. They wanted him to look to the stars instead of the Savior. By the way, they, they believe the Babylonians, when you die, you went to a dark place. And so you know what they believe? Live it up. Live it up while you can. I tell you, that sounds like today. The devil wants that mentality. You know what? You know what we sang about here tonight, to this today? We sang about death. How beautiful heaven is. I'm not dreading it. I'm excited about it. Amen. Amen. We find they wanted to change their ways and they wanted to change their talk. They wanted to teach them the language of the Chaldeans. They want them to start saying uh, some of their other God names. I tell you, I get so tired of our world and society today that's pressed in. And I tell you what, they all feel that, well, it don't matter. All gods are the same. That's a lie of the devil. And he's pressing our young folks. He's pressing us. You'll find it on all uh, fronts, on the television, the media, in our schools. I tell you what, as long as you're sincere. That's what they try to tell us. They try to change uh, their talk. You know what? The best thing to talk about is Jesus. Amen. There ain't nothing better to talk about. Now, I know we like to talk about uh, our, our things we do and all that, cooking and eating and fishing and hunting and, boy, whatever that is you like to do, amen. But you know what's even better? When you talk about God about it. Amen? amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You'll find He wants to change our talk. And by the way, I believe a child of God ought to talk a little different. I do. I do. I don't understand. It ought to convict you. Amen. Sometimes it's not necessarily bad words, and sometimes we're just talking. We ought to, we ought to just be silent. But I tell you, the devil wants to get in there, and boy, I tell you what, if you don't testify for the Lord, you're testifying for the devil. He likes that. When you be silent sometimes, he says, boy, I just got some glory. I want to give God the glory, don't you? Amen. Amen. He want to change our name. We just read there, he gave him new names. I tell you, Daniel had a name. Daniel means God will judge. Every time you hear Daniel, he, knew he talked about his God. Amen. They gave him a new name called Belshazzar. That's Bel's prince. That's another false god. Trying to brainwash him. You find Hananiah. It's a name that means the gift of the Lord. He changed, changed that to Shadrach. The illuminated by the sun god. They tried to get his mind off the son of God to the sun. Michelle there, he had a name of who is the Lord. Who is the Lord? Say amen. To Meshach, who is, who is Eshetar. That's another false god. Azariah was the Lord's my help. I'm going to tell you what, the Lord's my help, and don't forget it. Amen. But you find the boys Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego means a slave of Naboo. Boy, how awful. They said, now, you no longer call yourself this. These are new names, and this is what you're going to go by. Boy, they were pressing them. They were pushing them. Not only that, they were, uh, they were trying to uh, change their looks. They said, in three years, you're going to stand before the king, and we got to make you sure you look good. you got to look better. you got to look like how we want you to look. 
So a lot of pressure was on him. You know, you'll find when you read this story, Daniel says, I ain't doing it. I mean, now, I tell you, I'm a steak person. Maybe you're not, I don't care, you may, you know, whatever, but you got something you like, but I like steak. I really do. And they came to Daniel, they had, to, I, I believe it was pretty good, I like steak with fat in it. I like a fatty steak, amen. I believe this was a fatty good steak, amen. It just was unbelievable. And Daniel, and he said, this is how you're going to eat. We're going to give you the good vitamins so that when you stand before the king, you're going to be presentable to the king. You know, Daniel wasn't concerned about looking presentable to the world's king. He's concerned about looking good to God. Yeah. And Daniel says, no, go by the way, we'll, we'll just eat pulse. He's, talk, he's talking to him and the other three boys, so the four of them says, we will, we, yes, we ain't going to do it. We're going to eat pulse. Now, I don't know if that's your favorite thing to eat. Maybe that is, praise God. But you know what? They said, no, no, you're, we're worried. We're, we're concerned about what the king thinks. He said, let, let me prove it. Now, I, I can't imagine 10 days could make a big change in somebody. But they ate pulse for 10 days. And you know what? God intervened. And you know who looked better? The ones who ate the pulse. David, I, I like that Daniel here, amen. You find in our life, and when it's said and done, amen. You find, by the way, the devil doesn't change you overnight. They gave him three years. We're going to change you. It's going to take three years. You know, the devil's very patient. He knows how to change. It's subtle. Next thing you know, you look another year later and say, what happened? Another two years and say, what happened? Three years. I've often said, you know, you can look at an example is, you know, television, when it first came out, in a sense, was, was pure. They didn't allow anything impure on there, did they? And I don't know what, might even even be for Leave It to Beaver. Some of you don't even know what Leave It to Beaver is. I, I don't know. I mean, Leave It to Beaver maybe even had some things in it. But you know what happened? Slowly, the devil added some things. Who remembers uh, watching black and white TV? Well, we have a lot of old folks here, don't we? <laughs> Who remembers when they, you know, there was a time there was no cursing on TV? Yeah. Yeah. Who remembers when they started having curse words? I don't know what show it was, whatever it was, but they didn't curse, did they? They got to that, and they went, B! Remember that? Amen. Oh, the devil liked that. He said, they, look at there. Even the Christians are laughing. <gasps> Isn't that right? Yeah. It didn't happen overnight. And now we can look, and we allow that in, and now we look today, and the fact is, really, and we've conformed to it, haven't we? It's all wicked. There ain't not enough in every show, it's just ungodly. I don't care what show it is, even the singing show, everything. It didn't happen overnight. And that's how he's working on you. He's putting pressure on you. You don't even realize you've changed. You know, our nation's got a great pressure against it. The devil didn't like a nation that was founded upon God. And we're living in a day, you can see Babylon has caused confusion. We don't even know whose God is what anymore. It's unbelievable. Our, our kids are oppressed. I've shared about that already. Our marriages, our families. You and I are oppressed. Say, Brother Brad, what can I do? There's been a takeover. It's happening amongst us. What can I do? I know what you can do. You can do what Daniel did. He purposed in his heart. You know, he made a commitment. This world don't want a commitment. Boy, if they make a commitment in marriage, they've got to have some sort of clause or something like that anymore. That's just how our, that's how our world is. When you purpose, you know what, I want to warn you. If you make this commitment for God, you know what you'll find yourself? 
standing alone. Well, who made the decision, Brother Brad? Everyone's going to go with us. No. You'll find yourself alone. These four boys are alone in their commitment. And there's nothing says that anyone else stopped doing the, the meat, by the way, except these four boys. They stood alone. It's not going to be easy. But you've got a purpose in your heart. Joshua said, it's for me and my house. I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. We're making a commitment for the Lord. He told Joshua before he went into going out and to leave the, he's taking Moses' spot. He said he's the word of advice and the best advice he can have. He told him to stick to the word of God. He said, don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. You just follow the word of God. And you know what? You'll be blessed. I want to encourage you this morning to purpose in your heart to go God's way. Yeah, but that's not the world's way. You're right. It's contrary. Yep. But you know what? If you do your part and purpose in your heart, say, God, I want your way, you know what God will do? He'll do his part. Yeah. You can read down here, it says, now God in verse 9. Woo, I'm going to tell you what, God's involved. Says, but now God brought Daniel in favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And we I already shared about what happened there. They did what they took a stand, what was right. It's hard to take a stand, what's right, what's God, amen. And they took that stand, and you know what happened? Those ten or those four boys, the Bible says that they were the fun, they were found none like them in the land. By the way, it's that they were ten times better, smarter than anyone else. You know who did that? God did. Yes. Did you know that you purpose in your heart for God, it will be worth it? Yeah, but I gotta have pulse. I didn't get to have a steak. I'm going to tell you, it'll be worth it. It's against the knowledge of the world, yes. They said it doesn't even make sense that a steak would have worse results than pulse. It don't make sense. They had all that knowledge. It don't make sense philosophy. We got to, you know what, don't make, don't matter what the wisdom of the world says. It's what God says. And you know, this morning, it will be worth it all one day. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, it may not be so easy down here. But one day, he's coming. Yep. He's going to call my name. <clears throat> I'd like it to be in the rapture. But one day, it might just be in the hospital bed. It might be in, in, in the nursing home. I don't know. Only God knows. But just like one said, you can put your, you can hang the hat up on it, and it's going to happen. And one day when we get to glory, we won't say to ourselves and say, "Boy, I sure wish I won a purpose in my heart. What a waste!" Oh, you know what I'm going to say? I wish I purpose sooner. That's right. I wish I'd give him more. How wonderful it is! Fact is, we're pressed, folks. But you don't have to get pushed purpose in our hearts. Fact is, you know, I say, well, I did that one time. You better do it again. The Bible says, Lord, give us our daily strength. Yeah. I need that daily strength. I've got another week coming up. You know what I'm going to need? Because there's pressure out there. I'm going to need more of you and less of me. Hmm. Let's all stand. Father, help us. We are in a takeover. We live in a world of confusion. They teach your kids at school that we came from monkeys. They teach them all types of things and all things that are contrary to the Word of God. And they believe them. Lord, help us, Lord. Help, it's a battle. It's a force that's out there and we can't get away from it, but we've got one that can help us. One that's there for us. Lord, there's victory in Jesus. There's not victory in us, Lord. We'll fail you. Lord, this morning, help us to, 
the herb is in our heart. Lord, another day, another week, they're going to do what you want us to do, not what maybe our flesh wants us to do. Help us to be led by the Spirit, Lord. Help us to lead our families. Help us to lead our church, Lord. Help us to be a light in the community. Lord, there's pressure. We know it's, you know it's not easy. Lord, we need relief that comes from you. Help us, Lord, to stand for you. The, world, the, the little eyes have got their eyes on us. The world's got their eyes on us. Help us, Lord. Father, have your way in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. I don't know what kind of pressure that maybe you are facing. You're getting tugged this way, pushed this way. Someone tells you one thing, someone tells you another. Let me tell you, there's one this morning that will not steer you wrong. It's my precious Savior. Listen to Him. Let's not listen to Mommy or Daddy or Grandma or Grandpa or the Preacher. Let's listen to God. He's the truth. The world doesn't like the truth. The devil doesn't like it. He's trying to steer us away. He's trying to make a mess. He's trying to take something precious that God has made and make it a mess, make it a mar. The Bible said, take heed lest you fall. Help us, Lord. We need you. We can't do it without you. He said, but Daniel, help us to be like Daniel. Yeah, we might stand alone. Might not be too popular. Help us, Lord. There's pressures at school. There's pressures at work. There's pressures in the family. You watch that TV and it's pressures. The devil wants to change. Help us to be more like you, Lord.